recording. Good morning. What we got today? Wednesday. Woohoo. Wednesday. Blue skies. Come on in. Good morning. Welcome to the Shack Shack. Here we are again. I'm enjoying this session. This has been my favourite so far, I think. But I say that every time. <laughs> I'm liking these houses. They're very achievable. They're very achievable. And yesterday evening, I just got so absorbed in colouring in, you know. I really felt the, the benefits of that process, you know, it was great. So I understand. And some of your artwork is just glorious, you know. What I'm seeing on, uh, on Facebook, blooming excellent. Come on in, good morning. It's ever so fresh in here. I hope that you're all safe and happy and well. Come on in. I've turned the heating up. It's a little bit fresh. Winter is definitely a coming. There's a change in the season, isn't there? Hey? And as I left the house, the two kittens were sitting on the window, so looking at me. I said, yeah, mummy's got to go to work. <laughs> well, they're my company, aren't they? I talked to them. Mummy's got to go to work. So I had, we had a little cuddle before I left. <laughs> Told you I was going mad. Whatever. You rock. <laughs> Come on in. Ah, nectar. Grab a seat. Are you new to the Shack Shack? Well, come on in, because you're in the right place. The, um, the safe, happy and creative place. That's what we are, aren't we? Every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, we hook up together, don't we? And we doodle and we colour and we get creative and we just redirect our thinking, which is always key. Have a bit of banter. Have a cup of tea, have a cookie. We'll be in the mince, we'll be in the mince pie phase soon, won't we? Hey, <laughs> it's all good. And Stuart, could you please tell me that the sound is okay? Stuart's in the building with you, I'm sure. He's always there. Good, thank you, Stuart. Sound is good. Excellent. I, uh, I wanted to, um, let's have a look. I've just seen me. Yeah, it's been a couple of weeks we've been on these. I'm loving them. Do you remember when we started on the long, the, um, the bookmarky ones? Yeah, nice. I'm going to go back to the bookmarks. Um, not with houses, I've got other ideas, other doodles, other designs. And I think they look just lovely on, I just like this craft, the buff card and the thing, it looks really nice, don't you? And there are other designs you know, like proper filigraphy stuff and Zentangle, as they call it. Um, yeah, nice, very nice. So, yeah, if you if you did buy yourself a pack of that buff paper and black paper, don't worry, we'll be using it up. Yeah. So, um, so today, I've got my little black because I had to laugh. I saw a couple of you on Facebook. Uh, was saying that you, the Posca pens are so good that you got a bit carried away, you know, had a bit of a snow flurry. And I did exactly the same thing. I thought, yeah, this is this is real serious snow. <laughs> I was just saying, because the pens are so good, you can't stop using them. Look, this is what we're going to do today. Right, so I coloured it in. I made a nice sky. I like that sky. So it gets darker as it goes away. Well, we know how to do that, don't we? I, I, I haven't got a lot of snow per se, but there's a lot of snow has fallen for sure. So that's what we're going to do today is that simple frame. I thought that'd be nice. Easy. I had to come up with something that worked for everybody. That worked on paper, on designer paper, on buff paper. Um, that worked whatever colours you've used that worked um, whether you've done a winter sky or a summer sky you know and I thought wow the picture itself is so busy isn't it there's so much we've packed so much detail in come on in shut the door it's a draft um, they, they, we've packed so much detail in I thought well let's try something a little bit neutral a bit vanilla 
you know, vanilla being not busy. But, it, I mean, it's, it's quite colourful. And therein lies the trick. You use the colours that you used on the inside on the outside. And that's it. So I've got mine. Have you got yours? So what we'll have to do, see, for the first couple of minutes, we'll have to figure out which pencils we used and then pick like five. How many did I do? I did one, two, three, four, five. I picked six, six colours mm, of the houses that I used, not too dark. I picked six colours and then I just did a repeat of those six colours, just kept going. So, so we, can, we can do that as we go along. I might pick different colours because so I'm going to use, for the job, I'm going to use the, um, design, the one I started on the designer paper because I got carried away and I finished this one completely. So um, I wanted to just show you a little trick though because if you look at the snow, Right, it hasn't got black lines around it. Let's come in a bit closer, shall we? Let's have a little, just show you a little, oh yeah, other way. Right, come in a bit closer. What's the time? Uh, three minutes past 10. Come on in. Right, so what I wanted to show you was, because I used the Posca pen, the little one, to get the snow in, right? So we did all that. So you put, I, I got, like I say, I got carried away, so I put a bit on the sit on the chimneys. See up here on the chimney? That's a good one to show you. That's a good example there. So this one I got a bit carried away, but clearly nobody's, nobody's opened the window. <laughs> and when they do, you don't want to be walking along here, do you? Oof. But what I wanted to show you was rather then take a black pen and outline it, which looks a bit weird. W what I figured out was when it's dry, what looks really cool is if you take a couple of gray pencils, take a lighter one to start with, and then what you can do is you get a shadow going underneath. So underneath and on top of the, of the snow pile, whether it's on a, like here, if it's on the, on the chimney, just get in and around it with grey, like that, that'll make it pink, right? And then create a shadow underneath, which it would do, wouldn't it? If you think about it, because it's obviously there, you see, and then you just get in with a chisel like that and you add a bit of shadow, see? And straight away, it really looks like, so you go in here like that and you add shadow underneath the snow and then where it's in the window like that I took a lighter one playing it safe and I added a bit of shadow above the snow as well so below and around it you see and then when you do that it straight away it makes it ping try it it's, it's a simple trick I figured it out I'm trying to make the snow pop so you know up here for example where you can hardly see out the window anymore for snow somebody's got to figure it out up there Nan's up there, slowly getting snowed in here, you see? But as soon as you put some um, shade shadow on the window there, it makes the, it makes the snow pop. Now she can't see a thing because the windows are really dark as well, but that's okay. You get what I'm saying. Oh, there we are. So you add a little bit of shadow underneath and that will make your snow sit really well. On, the, on wherever it's balanced. So along here, for example, there. Let me start with the light one, because the light one always gives me the, there you go, see? And, and the Posca pen, what's cool is, it kind of acts as a block, so you can't go, you don't go over it. And then I'll go in, tell you what I was using yesterday a lot, was my sharpener. Let me just empty it. So the greys that I use, they're all polychromos and they, there's loads of them, in, um, in a set of 12. We, I put together a bundle of 12 because so many of you have got the pergoliners and that thing I don't like about the pergoliners is there's none of that grayscale. And so we put together a set of 12 polychromos with some really cool, the ones that I felt were missing in the pergoliner box. Don't get me wrong, pergoliners are great. 
because of course they've got the the watercolour as well which is super and we shall do more of that as well somebody requested some more of that yeah you see how it makes the snow just jump off the now it looks like it's actually a layer I like that oh you could spend hours I was up until 10 o'clock doing this last night titivating and putting little shadows in and you see and as soon as you do that it does not look good so give that a go right just a little bit of shadow so you can't see the snow here there is though this is called a snow catcher so you'd hope that there'd be a bit there otherwise you'd not a waste of money that was right there you go you see yeah, just add a little bit just adds a bit of texture doesn't it nice okay dokey okay titivating again gray so what we want to do now right that's just a top tip if you like um posca pen snow and then and then make it uh stand out by adding a little shadow around it with dark gray light gray to start with play it safe okay time for a tea break you all right It's a funny old phase, isn't it? Hmm? Funny old phase. I was talking to Paul, my darling friend, Paul Church, this morning. He's on telly this evening at six o'clock. You know, we keep going. We keep going. The um, the sale, the, we, we can see the bottom of the pile now, which is great. So that will all be sorted by Friday, according to Paul. Um, I'm glad. I'm really glad because there was no way we were going into Grey Friday with um, with a, with outstanding orders still sitting there. So, you know, it's one of those things. But it will it works, you know. And I was speaking to Paul, and he's so chirpy when I ring him up. Morning, and uh, and it's straight away it puts a smile on your face, you know, rather than somebody. Oh, God, here we go again. <laughs> you know, I said, you're always so chipper, Paul. He said, so are you? He said, you do it every day in the shack shack. I said, well, yeah. He said, same reason. He, he, his theory is it makes life a lot more enjoyable if, you, if you're chipper. And I thought, he's absolutely right. It's still, he's only telling me what I already know, but sometimes you need to hear it again, don't you? You see, so you smile, and straight away, life is easier. Just with smiling, you know. Of course it is. You know, last couple of weeks I've been a bit down on myself and a bit low. It doesn't help me for start. For a start, and it certainly doesn't help the people around me, does it? When I start going all like that, <laughs> what's the point? Nothing changes. Just my just my frame of mind. Nothing changes, nothing gets better, nothing improves. In fact, it's guaranteed to go the wrong way. So, so Chipper Paul this morning put a smile on my face and now I'm paying it forward. There you go, I'll put a smile on your face. So, come on, let's get started. And what we'll do is we'll start by measuring out. So let's have a close look at what I did. Well, don't look too closely, right? It's hand drawn. It's not computer generated, guys, right? So it's an, it's an original. Hey, listen, one day this might be worth a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, well, I tell you what, I bet old Lowry didn't think that. It, well, no, actually, he knew that he was worth a lot of money before he died, didn't he? There you go. So you can see if you look at the border, let's have a look at the border. Yeah, it's almost, yeah, it's very uh, naive, sort of rough, which is exactly how I wanted it. Yeah, that's my theory and I'm sticking to it. I like that rough, grungy look. Okay, so, and I also, because this is so busy, I thought we, we need something, don't we? See, because thinking ahead a little bit, what I want to do, of course, is uh, I want to mount this, don't I? I want to put this on uh, on a little canvas board. So and I've got them somewhere here because we said right at the beginning we had two things we were going to do We were either going for a coaster or a canvas, weren't we? That was the that was the gig 
coaster or a canvas. So I've got the canvases somewhere. I just dug them out. Where did I put them then? Oh, here they are. Yeah, there you go. See, so I've got, that looks a bit ropey. <laughs> it looks like the cat's had a go at it. It doesn't matter though, because we're going to cover it up, right? So the idea is that the canvas goes on the back there and then we do a wrap around. And, but it sits exactly, it's going to sit exactly. So that'll be nice, nice, nice. Right, that'll go, that'll sit on there, just the treat. And it will just wrap around the, the edges as well. It looks a little bit big actually. Good. Um, so where's the one I'm doing? This one. So let's make sure that it sits on there. That's it. So that'll work nicely. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do this border now. So, border. What I need is a black micron pen and a ruler to start with. So what ruler have you got? Have you got an inch ruler or a centimetre ruler? Either works. Just use what you've got in front of you. It's a quarter of an inch or half a centimetre. I'm going to go with my Pergamano ruler. And what I'll do is, it's a little bit rough this. I didn't measure this very well, did you, Gray? <laughs> right. And what we'll do is, we'll just measure out our, our dividers. All right, so I'll come to this one. And then I'm just going to come along. And I've, I think it's easier to just do this as you go, just a little dash along the edge every either quarter of an inch or um, half a centimetre I'm doing. A little bit, what's going on here? Uh, okay, just stretch it a little bit, that one. That'll do. Um, yeah, so you only need to do it, you've got to do it on all four sides really. Let's have a look. There we are, like so. Make sure that it, it's in the right place so that it marries up when you... Right, that'll do. So I've already, I already did this. So I'm just gonna make them a little bit more visible, my little dashes. That'll do. There. I mean, you could always do these with pencil first if you felt inclined, couldn't you? So, so then this one, see it's gonna go across to there, isn't it? Right, so let's have a look. Make sure it's the right distance. That'll work. Oh, can I just go on the outside? Right, there you go. So we'll make little marks so we know where our squares are going to be. This is a pretty basic kind of doodle, isn't it? around this one again. Easy street. Right, there we go. Just a little mark like that. What did you work on? Did you work on designer paper? Or did you use the buff card or the white side of the buff card or copy paper? What did you do? Hmm? I might move that one over a bit. Actually, what am I doing? Let's have a look. Yeah, that'll do. Okay. And then what we've got to do is, don't go straight through the picture, but what we'll do is we'll just make our dividers now. See, and we can do both as we go along, can't we? So we'll do that one and that one. There we go. This would be really easy, easy. So we'll just make our little boxes now. I'm using a micron pen. I'm using the double, the, the O1, the O11, the O11, all right? So this is just an hour of sweet relief for me. Be all right. I am, um, I've got to know my limits, you know. That's what I'm figuring out. And what I, if I, like say I, I, I worked on Saturday, I did the telly. And then, um, and then on Sunday, I was up stupid early doing, um, picking and packing. And, and then, 
Monday we all hung out together and, and then I was in the office and it, what happens is I overdo it I forget that I'm in my 60s you know and uh, it catches up with me I'm not 30 I don't ping back it's like knicker elastic it doesn't work like it used to anymore and, um, and I just need to learn that I'm you know I need to stop and uh, I really do I've when will I learn this? Because then I, what I, when I overdo it on Monday, what I do on Monday, I lose on Tuesday. It's just, it's the way it goes, you know, and uh, it happens every time. So working last night till 10 o'clock, this morning, I couldn't stop yawning. <laughs> I thought, well, I can't go on the shack shack yawning like this. I could not get my head off the pillow. And then the last two hours, all I've been doing is yawning. You know when you're with somebody and they keep yawning and it gets you started? I thought, well, that's just what they need, isn't it? Oh, yawny Annie on the telly. <laughs> so, but it's gone now. Do you know what helped? Very, very deep breaths and cold water. Drinking it, not pouring over my head. That worked, that woke me up. Deep breaths, so lots of oxygen. I'm sure that's like a, a form of meditation. And then drinking cold water. There you go. And then I stopped yawning. But I, it was really getting bad. I thought, I'm going to break my jaw in a minute. You know, you just... You don't know what's going on. So, yeah, and it's because I don't know when to stop. And I bet that that rings true with a lot of you. Hey? I know. I'm not alone. We're never alone. So, so we're just going to make our little boxes like this. Be nice. And then I'll just concentrate on one side so that we... So you can finish it, you see. That's the key, isn't it? And then we'll... Then we'll decide, can't we? We can decide, are we going to make it into a card? Are we going to make it into a canvas? Because I was, my, my whole thing was, you're going to spend this amount of time on something, then surely you're going to make it into a present, yeah? <laughs> I, I also, I looked at this, right, I know I'm waffling now, but I looked at that and I thought, if I scanned that, right, and I like printed it onto a nice card, and then I've got these, we use these on the weekend. Um, these are the the new word stamps that came with the Jane Nestorenko uh, stamps. And I thought, they sit really nicely. They've got a really nice feel, you know. I thought, I bet that would look lovely. You can make your own Christmas card. I've made my Christmas card, people, is what I'm saying. I think I'm going to, do you know what I'm going to do? I tell you what I'm going to do. I've just decided what I'm going to do. Woohoo! I've worked it out. High five. I've done my Christmas cards. The thing is, everyone's going to get the same one. But it it was, you You are my witnesses. It took a week to do, okay? There you are. They won't be originals, they'll be prints, but they'll be very nice prints. It'll be the first time I've sent Christmas cards out in years. I always make them, and then it's so late that I miss the postal, you know, and then by the time... Ugh, it's rubbish, really. I'm um, for for somebody who runs a card making company, a card, a paper craft company. I'm embarrassingly bad at sending cards. Interflora does a roaring trade with me because <laughs> I always miss the train on the cards, and I think, oh, they'll like flowers. It was Linda Williams' birthday yesterday, and I didn't get her a card. Uh, what a crime, right? Didn't have time, did I? But <laughs> she got flowers, didn't you, Linda? Yes, you did. <laughs> there you go, busy woman. Right, are we ready? I'm not on my own. I know I'm not. Everything I say, there'll be hundreds of people going, yep, I gotcha. Now, the next thing we want to do, okay, let's have a look at my, I better be careful with this now, because this is going to be my Christmas card. Hey, listen, if you play your cards right, this could be the Clarity Christmas card. This could be it, people. <laughs> I might just do that. We've got a beautiful platinum press printer. I wonder if Dave can fire that up. 
He's on his way to the Birmingham to buy a second one. So like, blimey, how many of these windmill presses do we need, Dave? He said, I've got a plan. So, okay, see you later. Now, what we need now is the box around the back there. So we've got choices. We can use our micron pen or we can use a pencil because we're going to go back with this. So probably you might as well use a good pencil as in lead pencil, HB. There's a good one because they're sharper. That will do. And, and if you, it's, a, it's, it's removable if you get it wrong. So now let's see if I want to do this with a pencil. Yeah. And then you're going to make a square within each one like that. Yeah? To go along like that. This isn't hard, is it? There you go. We'll do it with pencil though. What about under here? It's like the princess and the pea. Okay. So we've got our little boxes, our tiles. And then we're going to add our... See, the thing with this is, you could turn it into... You could, you can make so many different optical illusions with this, this particular design. Well, you couldn't call it a design, is it? It's just a box within a box, Barbara. But once again, you see, it's the... It's the relaxing thing, isn't it? Look at this one here. <laughs> there you go. Let's do one side and then we can always come back and do, if we get time, we can go up the other side as well. There, like that. Okay. Yes, right. Next thing. Now we come for the colour. So I've got to pick the colours depending, and this is the point of this, right? Look at what you've got in there. Look at your different houses, because I know you've got lots of different colours, but we all pick different ones. So at this point, I can't say you need uh, magenta red, you need blah, 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 you need what yellow is it? It's neither here nor there. It depends entirely on what colours you use. And I know that you've all used different colours. So pick five or six of the colours that you used. Let's do that. Let's have a sip of tea as well. Let's not dribble on that. This suddenly just gained in value. Do you know that? <laughs> That's lovely. Yeah. It's And then on the back, it could say something like an original or, yeah, an original by Barbara Gray. Couldn't it? Printed off an original by Barbara Gray. Made from an original? What'd you say? I'll have to look. The original was done by Barbara Gray. <laughs> Who gives a monkeys, really? As long as I get a Christmas card this year. This year of all years is more important than ever. I know what to do. So I'll print this and make it into lovely Christmas cards. And then the original one, I will make into a beautiful canvas for my mum and dad. There you go. There you go. Sorted. That's their Christmas sort. <laughs> Do you think they'll be impressed? One of the things that I'm figuring out, come on, while we're looking for our colours, this this whole COVID experience, if that's what you can call it, COVID crisis, pandemic, coronavirus, it changed names. Did you notice that? over the As the months went on, it, it went from being called coronavirus didn't it to covid who decided to change the name of it somebody up there said let's call it covid and it had a number with it as well and that's always discouraging because that means they've they there's more numbers to come but i'm not going to even think about that right come on let's pick the right colors for the right piece of artwork so for this one, for example, I want an orange for sure. Yeah, there you go. I'm going to use an orange because I think that'll be lovely. I'm going to use, I don't want a too darker. I don't want, I want a turquoisey one. There you go. That one there. Turquoise is very cool. Don't those colours look lovely together? Those two together. Wouldn't you want a top like that in that colour? 
nice. I've got that burgundy-ish colour there, haven't I? It's more of a pinky colour. I might have to go to that. That might work better. The um, Pergamano one, the Pergoliner. Yeah, that's a good colour. This one's not finished, see? Green. I've got a green up there. That's a good green. Yes. I've got four. I haven't got a blue yet. Oh, hang on. That was an expensive pencil went on the floor there. Okay. Oh, it's my favourite one. <laughs> oh no! What's going on? Cascades raining polychromo. It's because they're holding them the wrong way. Right, that would do. Right, I need a red. A rote. Uh, that one there. Maybe. Maybe. I'm not sure. Or yellow? Yellow might be better. Let's go with a yellow. How many have I got there? Six. How many have you got? I'm going to have to sort my pencils out. This is getting beyond a joke. I'm, I'm enjoying this, though, because it's like... It's, it's a break from the postcards, isn't it? Last week, we did the doodling. Uh, in fact, yeah. And then this week, we're doing the, um, the colouring. So it worked, it's quite good, actually, because we're still getting the experience, aren't we? But using it with our own art rather than printed art. Having said that, I've got another good idea that's coming up in the pipeline. But um, more will be revealed. Stick to the plan, Gray. Let's do one thing at a time. So what we need to do, though, now, and there's no big shading tricks involved, but you do need a decent nib on this. So shh. Careful shading, and then what we'll do is, there you go. So now we're going to just lay out our colours, but we're only oh, we're only colouring around the outside. Have I got my day Edna's on? No. Nope. Do you know I got really despondent last night because one of my front teeth is getting it. You know, like you know, it's coming out, and you think, oh, don't do that to me. Just don't do that to me, people. So all I want to do is be a gappy lil. <laughs> so yeah. Oh dear. I'll have to um I'll have to call the dentist. Just you know, don't you? You know what you know. I don't like the dentist at the best of times. So I've done let me just put them down as I do them. Done the red, done the teal. I want to put the orange next to the teal because I just like those two colours together. See one of the things as well about pergoliners and polychromos, what I'm using here, because they're, the B pencils in the polychromo, uh, in the pergoliners, you see how you get total coverage. Even though I'm working on a pink background, it's completely um, opaque. That's the word we were looking for, Gray. Then I think I'm going to go green. It's interesting how it works, you know that it can cover, you get such good coverage with these pencils. Then I think I'm going to go to that one. Yeah, and then and then I'm going to go with the pergoliner, the pink one. See, it's the same family, and it's the same. In fact, this is an aqua one. This is an A pencil. I just wanted the colour. So even the A pencils work. Look, just because it's a water soluble, it doesn't mean it's not, you can't use it dry. There you go. <sighs> nice. Nice, nice, nice. Nice colour combination for this. See, it, it ties in. That's, I think that's the whole point. I mean, this isn't finished yet, is it? I ran out of speed, but that doesn't matter either. Even the yellow look is. So whether you're using pergoliners or you're using... Right, so I've got those ones. And now we go again. So I'll go back to the beginning, red. This is what I did last night in the kitchen. I enjoyed it, really. You can't really, does it work? It's working as much as it's related to work for me, I suppose. Yeah. 
It's not sitting in front of the telly, is it? But um, I really enjoyed it, and the little kittens were <laughs> they were helping me. They were helping me. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Quite a cleanse your shinuses. Have you ever a uh, Dave? <laughs> oh no, this is a daft question. Have you ever, have you ever heard Dave sneeze? My Dave. Have you ever been in the building when he's had a, a sneeze attack? Good grief. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't believe it. He has one of those, like, multiple sneezes. Achoo, 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 and it's really loud, right? And everybody just freezes while he has his sneezes. <laughs> there you go, I'm a poet and I don't know it. And, um... I remember being in a supermarket once. I can't even repeat the language. I was in a supermarket once and um, with Dave and he suddenly had one of his moments, right? And everybody in the aisle, it was like, <laughs> you know, like everybody stopped dead in their tracks. Green. Everybody stopped dead in their tracks while Dave just let rip. And this bloke stood there. <laughs> he stopped as well. He, everybody froze. And this bloke, as he walked past, he shook his head and he went, let's just say he said, poor, poor sod, right? But it was a bit stronger than that. And he just said, poor sod. And Dave was, <laughs> Dave's eyes were rolling in his head because it does, it wipes him out. I said, you know, one of these days, Dave, he's always had it. Apparently he's always been like that. It's worked mad, isn't it? Sneezing like that. <sighs> Doesn't it look pretty? It's very simple, isn't it? I mean, there's no skill required here, is there? But because, see, depending on which colours you use, this will completely tie in with your artwork. And that's the, that's the gig, really. So it's very simple. Teal orange. So we'll do one side and we'll see what happens and then we can go to the other side, can't we? We've got now olive green. This is nice though, isn't it? Nice to do. Simple, simple, simple. Have you made your Christmas cards? Are you going to stamp them? Are you going to draw them? Are you going to do what I've done? Spend a week making one and then print it? What are you going to do? Yeah. Do you know another thing that this would be good for? Thinking, thinking, thinking. Never stops thinking, this one, you know. This would be really nice, because we do, like, <laughs> this sounds like I'm pitching here. But seriously, we do gift vouchers at, um, we do gift vouchers at Clarity. You know, people buy gift vouchers for for them for their fam for their mums and their wives and that. And this would be a lovely gift voucher card because they always come in a nice card. So that might be another you know another possibility. Hmm. Yeah. There you go. Nice. <sighs> Don't smear. You you can't really. Not a good idea to. Sm not a good idea to smear because if you smear with your hand, you're going to smear the pigment through because it's quite concentrated, isn't it? What's the one after the red? It's the teal. See, and the nice thing is. You just keep going. So now we pop a good, goodly measure of teal in. Nice. Thing is, though, it's pink inside. This one 
it was different because it was white inside. But say you did this on on um, on the buff paper, then you'd want to put white inside now. You see, you would because otherwise this would be buff, wouldn't it, inside? And this has got a pink in it. So whilst this is a bit, you know, I f as I was doing it, I was saying, well, this is a bit redundant because I was just doing white on white. However, right, what you find is it, it, it looks different. It has a much more arty effect, sort of more mixed media effect. Right, now we need our white pen. Let's do one line and then we can always come back, okay? Oh, excuse me. Am I coming down with something? Okay. Right, Posca pens at the ready. <laughs> what do we do until these turned up? What did we do before we got Posca pens? I don't know. Well, I do. I used to experiment and I used to tit about. And the fat ones are really great. Just in case you don't remember, is that what we did? Yeah, that's it, this is really nice. So this one, for example, I did the, let it focus, I did the white line, see the buttony effect down at the bottom? I did the white line like that, and then I doodled straight in over the top. Doesn't that look cool? So the big fat ones, the big, the, the these ones are great. And, and also, not that you will, want to do this but just so you know right these nibs are double-ended so one's fatter than the other one it's got two ends it's got 1.8 mil and 2.5 mil bullet shaped so if you're wondering why does it say 1.8 and 2.5 it's because if i took a piece of tissue paper and i pulled that out and turned it round and put it back down so if this one gets a little bit tired let's call it tired hmm? turn it round with a bit of tissue paper, stick it down, and you've got a brand new nib at the other end of this. There you go, didn't know that either, did you? Ah, oh, I know, all these things. And and the other thing to do, is that in lid on now? Is make sure, two top tips, always leave the lid on when you're shaking, otherwise you could have one of those moments, right? And then the other thing is, when you replace the nib, make sure it goes on firmly. And that's the same, because I noticed somebody was saying these were drying out. If you listen, listen, listen. Did you hear that? Look, I'm putting it by my micro. If you hear it click, it's closed. If you don't hear it click, it's not closed. And that doesn't help. Right, so now, let's get to the, let's get to the center pieces. All right, everybody happy? Might as well be. Come on then. God, do they look nice on black? Do you know? I could give up my day job and just become a doodler. I think I may. <laughs> but not today. Right, so what we're going to do now, right, is put the white on the inside of the box. There you go and just spread it around a bit inside. And if you go over the, if you go over the, the color, it doesn't matter at all. But you'll see, it makes a big difference. It's much whiter. I mean, I'm, it's quite light where, where we are, where we're doing this. But if you're doing this on, on um, buff or craft card or a darker piece of designer paper you'll get this you'll see the difference immediately looks very arty this does there you go see, it doesn't have to be complicated or difficult to be effective does it um, I think that's there you go. Take your time. Take your time. And just add your white centers. There we are. You can see it popping as you go along. And the thing is, I can see exactly 
when I was doing the one, the sampler, this one, I, uh, <laughs> every time I took my eye off the ball to uh, to see what the cats were up to, it was quite hard to see what I'd done and what I hadn't done because it was so white on white. Um, but this is definitely easier. You can see exactly where you've been and where you haven't been. See, and you can actually straighten out your lines a bit now, make your boxes a little bit bigger. I don't mind it being a little bit wonky. I like that, actually. I think what I like about this art as well is that it's, it, you've watched it, you know, it's evolving, isn't it, as we're going along. It's, it seems to be, every time we do a little bit more to it and a little bit more to it, and it, it kind of it evolves, doesn't it? Oh, I've got that one there, it looks a bit dark. Let me just get a little bit of a, I just want to put a bit more white on that one, another layer. That'll do. See, and then the other thing what I wanted to do is, and I've done it, is on the inside, I've put a really dark, uh, I didn't do it on this side yet, but I will. Um, so I've dropped it back. So there's, there's a dark, there's a drop shadow between the frame and the, and the picture. Right, so we've done that, white. So now we go process. Now we go back to our black um, micron pen. Okay, so now we go back to the micron pen. Have I got the right glasses on? <laughs> on the way to the dentist, I think I might have to swing into the opticians. <laughs> What's going on with me? She's falling apart, people. I think that's what happens when you get to this age. Right, let me come in a little bit tighter. I think I'm going to have to get in a bit closer. Yeah, so I can see it better. All the better to see you with. Right, and then what I'm going to do now is box in where we did the pencil line. Oh, that one went a bit wonky. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do a correction in a minute. Because it's easy. You're working with all opaque things. But then again, how perfect does it have to be, people, eh? Does it, really? Do you think somebody's going to go, oh, hang on a minute, failed? Mm -mm. It's uh, that perfectionism in us. It can be paralyzing, you know. It really can. I, I got over it a few years ago. The, I tell you what helped me was the jelly plate, the gel press or jelly plate, and I was supposed to go on telly with it, and um, <laughs> and it's so unpredictable, right? It's an art form, you can't control. You, you, well, you can if you practice and you do lots of it. I've got, I can more or less get it right now, but when I first started with the gel press, you know, and you know, you you'd think about, shall I buy one? Now imagine having 2,000 of them in the warehouse and your job is to encourage or in, to motivate people or to demonstrate people so that they go, I've got to have that. Can you imagine? <laughs> pressure, no pressure. And I was and I was doing these jelly plate prints, but I had like a preconception of what I wanted it to look like, and and I was pulling these prints, and it was rubbish, and it was in the bin, and I was losing my hair, and the, the warehouse was rammed with these things, you know, and all our money was involved, and and I was put pulling these prints, and it just wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. I couldn't control it, and then I thought I've either got to give this up or I've got to change my mindset. You know, because everything I was doing was rubbish and in the bin, rubbish and in the bin. So I thought, right, well, let's just go with what you've got. Let's try that. So when I pulled the print, instead of going rubbish and in the bin, I thought, it's not over yet. It's not over yet. So then I did a bit more to it and I did a bit more to it. And I kept going. I did. I kept going until I liked it. And I accepted what the what this mono printing press thing, what it was giving me rather than trying to 
beat it into submission. I was just accepting what the paint reacting on the gel press was giving me. And, and as I did that, this process, it was quite amazing. I, I felt so, such a relief because I wasn't worried about the outcome all the time. I was just going through this process with paint and a brayer and a gel press and it went from being purgatory, like real unpleasant, to just a joy and it, it set me free. It was like bang, you know, and I think that 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 has been a blessing, a real, like, because that perfectionism can be paralyzing, you know, and many of you, many people never do anything. They never make anything because they don't want to make a mistake. And, and because they know it, it won't be perfect, they don't even bother trying. There's the vast majority. I mean, just the fact that we're in the shack shack, we're hanging out and doodling, it already shows a willingness to try. You know, that's pat on the back, people, pat on the back, because a lot of people don't even try because they think, I'll never be able to do it, so I'm not even going to bother trying. And, and the chances are, if they never bother trying, they'll certainly never do it. That's for sure, right? So you, you see, and, and, and I remember our darling Elizabeth, she, she said, um, she said about the groovy, she, she loves it, you know? And she said, the more you do, the more you want to do. That was the thing. The more you do, the better you get. And the better you get, the more you want to do, hey? And don't you find that about this? And so, so this getting hung up on, on being perfect, you know, it, it, it's crippling. It can cripple you because you, 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 you just beat yourself up all the time. And right from the start in the shack shack, I've said, there are no judges in this building. There are no judges in this building. And when you look at our artwork, you know, you know, you think about what, where we were in March when we first got together in lockdown and where we are now, you know, and look at what, just if you're working along with me and if you're not and you work later on or you catch up later, it's fine, it's fine. You have to use the Shack Shack for what it does for you. How, however it works for you is fine by me, you know what I mean? Um, but but if you if you have been working along and improving your drawing and improving your colouring and using it as a little bit of a not just a therapy or an escape, but also a little learning session every day or every other day, yeah, well you it's irrefutable. Your work will be getting better. It's like learning how to play the piano. My piano teacher years ago. He said, if you practice for 15 or 20 minutes every day, you will get, you will improve your piano playing. You know, had I paid attention to what he said 20 years ago, I'd, I'd be able to play the piano now. <laughs> Instead of a pathetic attempt at chopsticks or fleur de lis, you know. And I, I, I do, I do get that. And I, and I think this is the point with this is a little bit every day, little and often, you know, and then before you know it, you think, blimey, did I do this? You know, rather than the way I used to be, where it had to be perfect from the get go. And if it wasn't perfect, I was rubbish and it went in the bin. And that's a really negative cycle. And I know, I know, Knopf, right, that there are a lot of people listening to me at the moment, aren't you? And you know that I, I'm looking at you because a lot of you, 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 you do, you have that. And I had it. I still have it sometimes. I have to be vigilant. It's a learning thing. You have to get over it. Just get over the, the, the imperfections. Enjoy them, embrace them. And, and the other thing is make a note. So uh, that's what I did this time. Okay, treat it as a learning curve. So if that's what I did this time, next time I'll do, I'll do it differently. You see? And, and then that way, even your negative or your imperfection becomes a positive because you're learning from it. Learning from your, I won't even call them mistakes, you know, because it isn't that, it isn't that. Art is art. 
you know and 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 during the lockdown and I'm waffling now but the fact is during the lockdown my art my my drawing has improved immensely my my you know everyone looks at Barbara and says ah oh, she's ever so good no she's not she's better now than she was a year ago though I can tell you that and the other thing is that it's my confidence it's it's been a real real uh, learning curve for me um because I don't worry now about whether it's brilliant or not. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know, it's not important. What's important is that I'm enjoying it. That it that that, that it's and therein lies the secret. Because if you find joy in your art, you'll want to do it more. There you go. And that's and that's a fact. So so now this is lovely and drying, but look how bright it is. I mean, this isn't been coloured in yet, but you see how bright it is compared to. So if I bring it up to this camera, let me just show you. See, and it ties in all the colours. I think I might make this house yellow to tie in the yellow. So I haven't really got a yellow going on yet, not a proper yellow. And the archway, check out the archway and then have a look at the one, have a look at the one that I did because I noticed several of you were struggling. It's like, well, what's with the archway? So what I did was I put a couple of stairs in. Do you see? I put a, I put a, a bit of dimension in there. Do you see? And while we're on it, have a look at all the snow on the bridge. Isn't it lovely? I did get a kick out. I did get, no wonder I was at it until the, and I'll tell you what was lovely, was the cats were helping me. <laughs> I'll show, where's that picture? I'll show you a photo, see if I can find it. The cats yesterday, oh, here, here it is, look. <laughs> so I was in the kitchen doing my, my thing, right? Let me see if I can, I haven't got a very good signal. Here we go, look, 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 look. See if you can see this. I put it on a loop. Maybe this camera's better. Let me show you. Look, see the little cat helping me? <laughs> oh, he was jumping up at the, you can't see it very well. He was jumping up at the um, the lamp cable. <laughs> little monkey. Yeah. So, you know, it's great. You get a bit of company. Look, 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 look. Curious. Curiouser. See if he jumps. Look at him. Look, look, look. <laughs> no wonder it took me so long to get anything done. Aren't they beautiful? There's something just amazing about it's the innocence. It's the innocence and it's that curiosity. You know, the curiosity killed the cat. You can see where it comes from. Um, they're just so playful. Yeah. And they're growing like weeds. But do you know what? I, I honestly think that that's kind of brought it to its logical conclusion. So there's no point in, I know we, we, we don't seem to have done much, but we've, we've done the border. And what, what we're going to do is the same thing. What you'll do now is you'll go, right, teal. What comes after teal? It'll be orange. So again, we'll take the next side and we'll go up the side now. And what I did was I just traveled. Here we go. You see? So you go up there. Now I travelled up there, and I travelled along there, and I travelled back down there. And then, and then after, but I kept the sequence going. So after the teal came the orange, after the orange came the green, and I just kept going. Do so one side at a time, and then before you know it, you've got this beautiful border. And, um, and then on, um, what we'll do on, I'm going to get this printed. This is going to be the Clarity Christmas card, people. What do you think? It's good enough, isn't it? Nice. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll finish this one off. I've got to finish this one off now. <laughs> and then on Friday, I will show you how to wrap it around, how to, how to wrap it around a canvas so that we can make it into a gift. Yeah, so I've got to finish this one. But that's all right, I don't mind. I can spend another evening with the cats in the kitchen, dans la cuisine, my pleasure, you see. And then where I, I wasn't happy with what I did there, I'll do it differently on this one. 
that's how it works. Uh, so what I'm going to use is um, the canvas boards. I mean, you probably won't want to do this with me. And and this gear is really, there are lots of different um, PVA glues or sealants on the, on the market. This one by Viva I particularly like. So decoupage is a layering game. And this one is a Kleber und Lack. Kleber means adhesive and lac means like a varnish, like a lacquer. So it works in both. It's, a lot of you might have heard of Mod Podge. Mod Podge, same sort of thing. So if you're doing decoupage, remember when we used to cut the flowers out, you cut bits out, and then you'd have to lacquer them and stick them. That's what this is for. But it's really good for attaching anything to anything. It's a glue, right? It's a liquid glue. So I've put a, I've put a brush, I've added a brush to it on the website. Um, so, so you get the brush for free. Yeah, I mean, look, you've got a lifetime supply there. Um, so that's, that's what I'm going to use, and I'm going to show you how to, to do this. Um, and a couple of other little tricks. I'm sure I'll come up with something to, uh, to entertain you on Friday. So, so that's what we're doing. Functional art, we'll make a couple of presents. Might as well, hey? Yeah, it'd be nice. I think people really appreciate handmade presents. And on that note, I wanted to, to thank uh, those of you who are sending me just lovely things, you know, just beautiful presents, handmade things, pencils, just glorious. Your generosity is, is quite overwhelming and it's very much appreciated. And, uh, and Beth, who sent the beautiful crochet things, the, the colourful one, the kit, the kittens are using it. It's their favourite plaything. There's a colourful, like a doily, and um, and I thought, oh no, 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 don't use that, you know. And then they got so much joy out of it. They're just using it like a frisbee. It's brilliant. So yeah, hours of fun, hours of fun. Uh, take care, stay safe. Um, I'll see you on Friday, Stuart. Thank you for your help. I've got pottery this afternoon. I've got a Zoom class with pottery. Um, yeah. Shall I show you the pots I made? What time is it? I bet I can. Just stay there a second. They look a bit ropey at the moment. <laughs> but, do you know, it's okay because they're not finished yet. Shall I show you? Like, this is what we're doing. I mean, it can't be easy for the teacher. It can't be easy for the teacher to do a Zoom class, a pottery Zoom class. Imagine that, right? Um, And, but they're so tactile. So we made these pots. Let me show you. Are you interested in this? Come on, I'm going to show you anyway. All right. So I know you go, what? But you've got to see, you've got to see the process. So now, right, so these are little, these are little, they're like, you started out with a, a, a like a, you started out with a, a cube of clay and then you had to take a spoon and you had to scoop it out. So it's, it's empty in there right and then and then you had to this is all done in one piece you didn't attach the foot so it's made into um like a little vase it's still a bit thick i've got to go in there and work on that and now i've got to also now it's harder it's leather hard see ish so now what i can do is i'm going to go in here and i'm going to uh, carve out a foot so it looks a bit more Japanesey. Isn't it nice? There's a special name for this. I can't remember what it is though. I'll tell you next week. But what I want to do is show you, right, this is living proof of, you look at something, I don't know what all that black is in the clay either. I don't know, but it's going to add interest, right? You look at that and you think, well, you know, <laughs> interesting. That's what you're going to say, isn't it? Because you're not going to judge me harshly. But there's, an, there's the next one. Look, so they change shape. This one's square. They all, and they all started out with the same amount of clay. I weighed it, right? So it just goes to show you, depending on how you work something, you start out with the same place. So I wanted to do three different ones. So I did one that was like that, one that's square, trad, right? That's what, the, <laughs> all the other people in the class all had the same once and I was going off piste. One of those irritating students, you know. But a lot of it had to do with the fact that my clay was too wet because I hadn't read the instructions and you're supposed to get the clay out two days prior to the Zoom class. Well, I did it about half an hour before. So everybody else was already working with leather hard clay and mine was all over the place. So mine was a lot more 
malleable, if you like. I could work with it. Look, and then that tall one. Look at that. I know. So this one, it's got, a, it's a bit ropey on the top though. Look, I, I need to smooth it out and work on that. But let me, let's say, right, what I'm going to do. <laughs> Sue Fox, are you watching? I know. Sue's a master potter. She'll be watching me going, dear God, what's she on? But joy, that's what I get. I get total joy out of this, right? And when they're finished, when they're finished, I will, I will show you the finished result, right? Because this is going to take weeks before they're done. That's one of the things about pottery. But again, it's a learning process for the perfectionist. It's real therapy because you work with what you've got. And now I'm definitely working with what I've got, which is a lump of clay. And that's what I'm going to do this afternoon. They're, I think the rest of the team are already on another project. I'll have to catch up. <laughs> but you know what? As long as I'm with my hands and not alone in my head, it will be okay. Have a good Wednesday. Lots of love to you. I'll see you on Friday. Bye-bye now. Thanks, Stuart.